Well, hello, welcome. This is Agape Servant coming to you with Chronicles of Single Living. Okay, this is probably my second video on submission. I've made one, but I really wanted to come back and just hit some bullet points on submission because I really want women to understand the word submission and men help you understand your role in that submission. First of all, I just want to thank you for watching this, watching my videos, Chronicles of Single Living. Go to the Facebook page, my YouTube's uh, Chronicles of Single Living, and I'm a God-based servant. Okay, uh, first I want to just say, I give God all the glory for whatever I speak and whatever I say, He gets the glory. And my main purpose and my mission is to make sure that women, we stop making those silly mistakes that we've made that keeps us single or you know, if you've been in, I've been into, I've been married twice. Wow. So, uh, I understand there was things that I did not see that I missed. And we are not going to be perfect, so we are going to make mistakes. But God wants us to, um, to really flow in his word. And when we submit to him, and we make sure that we come unto his mission, then our lives will, will be better. Our lives will be blessed. So, that brings me to what I'm talking about is submission. So I'm going to try to give this really uh, short uh, 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 dialogue about submission because I want you all to, to make comments. I want you all to um, uh, inbox me, whatever. I got base serving is my Facebook page and then my Chronicles of Single Living. So you can Facebook uh, inbox me there as well. Uh, and then I have the YouTube page, uh, Cheryl, I got base serving. I believe that's what it is. But anyway, let's look at this submission. First, let's let me just pray. Father, I thank you for this message, this short, brief message on submission. You touch the hearts of the ones who, Father, will receive it. Father God, let them captivate it in their hearts. And Father God, begin to walk in the authority that they are supposed to walk in and under the submission that you, Father God, placed over them. Thank you, Father. And I pray in Yeshua's name. Okay. I want to first say this. In Genesis chapter 1, when God uh, began you know, he spoke things. But what he did speak was in Genesis chapter 1. And I'm reading out of the uh, New Living Translation. So I want to give you this word. In verse 26, he says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image to be like ourselves. They will reign over the fish in the sea and the birds of the sky and the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that are scurrying along the ground. In 27, he says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Huh. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. And it goes on to say what he told them to do in the in the whole gamut of the animals and the earth. But the first key was when God said, let us make man, man. Some Bibles say human beings, but I prefer the one that says man in the King James Version. Man, man, meaning the physical man. Now, I always ask the question to women, where were you women? Because you weren't physically on the scene. This is the understanding that we've got to really get in our heads man it was God Holy Spirit and Yeshua all when we say Adonai Holy Spirit and Yeshua they were all and then God he said let us let us make man in our image wasn't a physical image it was a spiritual image but he blew breath into the man we read that in genesis also and he blew his spirit inside man so the first creature the first clay people were was a man but he did not leave woman out because woman was inside man she was inside man just like a woman if you understand how you carry a baby that baby's inside you, but that baby is living. That baby is 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 listening. That baby is there, getting everything that you get. So the man was carrying you as a woman, amen. So that means God was giving some authority. He put the man physically there to give him authority, and he told the man, "Now go out." 
He told him to go out, name the animals, uh, tend to the garden, do all of this stuff. But then he said, it's not good for you to be alone. So after man had did all this stuff, he began to, uh, you know, uh, call the fruit and do all that stuff and manage the property. He was a manager, a property manager. <laughs> what I'm going to say, a property manager. So he was managing the property in the garden. Then God said, it's not good for man to be alone. Verse uh, uh, 18 in chapter 2 of Genesis. Now, another question is, God took two scriptures, two verses before he made woman. He created some animals because he was showing us that he was giving man authority. Man had authority to call, but that woman was inside of him, so she had some authority too. But man physically was the one God called in authority. He called him in. Now, two scriptures later, he says, okay, I'm going to make that woman. And he pulled woman out and they became a team, a couple. They cleaved together, male and female. They cleaved together. But there was still authority in this man. So as this authority was being built in the man, the man was the one that was going out and he was the one talking to God and he was one doing. Now she was always there. Don't get me wrong. She was always there. But it was the man, the physical man. What is this example? Because we know this is first man. This is the example of Christ, Yeshua. Jesus, the Christ, Yeshua. This is an example because this is first man. No sin. Now, here we go into chapter 3 of Genesis and what happens? The man has authority. Everything is submitting up unto him. Everything is doing what he speaks because God gave him that same authority to speak like him. So he was speaking the animals into existence. He was speaking fruit and he was speaking to the woman and she was complying and doing and all that. Okay, now here comes old Lucifer, Slewfoot as they call him. He wanted that authority. He wanted to be able to command the things on the earth. That the same thing God had given this man. You know, I can imagine Satan was like, why he give him that? Huh. He, yeah, I was the most beautiful in heaven. I was the one that was, uh, you know, making music out of my body. So I should have authority. Not. Hmm. Ain't that what we do today? Ladies, I'm preparing you. Because sometimes we begin to say, I should be able to do that. So what did the enemy do? He piqued the curiosity of a woman. She's supposed to be submitting to the mission that God gave to the man. She was supposed to be submitting to. But she get an idea. Because she's a free will and she has a free choice. So she goes to the, to the tree. And so here's the serpent. Here's Lucifer saying, why? Why can't you eat of this? Well, see, she heard the mission, but now she's going to make up her own mission. And she's going to say, well, you know, I ain't, whatever. She even didn't even tell the truth. She told the enemy, she said, well, God said for us not to eat it and not even touch it. That ain't what God said. So the enemy is like, mm, here, go on, take a piece, take a piece. She done walked away from her mission to God. Because first, you know, you submit to God. She don't walked away. She don't went over here and listened to some man that didn't have no authority. She listened to him. So now she partakes of this delicious, uh, whatever it came from, fruit. I ain't going to say an apple. But whatever, she partakes of it. Now his man over here, you know, he's in authority. But he kind of got clueless. He's over there. Instead of him saying, wait a minute, hold up, don't eat that. Because God told me we're not supposed to eat it. But now, he listens to the woman. He, he He's in authority, but he listens to the woman who uh, had listened to the beast, that serpent. So as she turns around, now I always say when you want to feed something and make it submitted to you, feed it out of your hand. Because when you feed it out of your hand, it becomes subject to you. You are in authority. So now she turns to man and she said, here, it's good. Hey, didn't do nothing to me. But guess what? Her eyes still wasn't open. It's because now she's doing her own thing. And she turns around. See, Satan had a plan. The plan was to get the authority from man. 
not the woman, because if it had been, it would have been all over when the woman ate, and it would have been all over, and it wouldn't even have nothing to do with the man, but it had something to do with the man that God had put in authority over that garden. So she turns around, she got that little fruit in her hand, and now she says, here, take. So what did he do? He obliged. He took it. He ate it. What did he do at that very moment? All the authority that he had, he now transferred it to her, who had already given it to Satan. Y'all got to get this picture. His authority is what Satan wanted, but he used the woman because he said, do what you want to do. You got the same authority. You got, you can do. Yes, we may have had that same authority, but the chief authority, the manager, the property manager was man, Adam. So when Adam submitted to her in the reverse, he was never supposed to submit to her. And we'll see that in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 and 22 on down. Man was supposed to love her and cover her and keep her. He wasn't supposed to submit. He was supposed to submit to God first. That means that he always goes to God. That means he talks to God because he was talking to God. I've never seen in the Bible where it says she was talking to God. Was, he was talking to God. Okay. So submission. The order of submission was God, Holy Spirit, Jesus, then man, then woman, and then children. See, man was always talking to woman. So whatever God was relaying, he was relaying it through the man to the woman. She was to submit to that mission. God had a mission. He had a plan. He wanted some things going on. We don't know all the things that God wanted because it kind of got interrupted. But the mission was God's submission to the man. The man was supposed to submit to God. So I, hopefully I said that right. God was the main manager. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were the ones over everything. And man came along. And so God appointed him authority and said, okay, now you go out and take care of everything. We'll come back and talk to you. Because we got a mission. And then God said, well, it's not good for you to be alone. You can't manage. You can't do all this by yourself. So I need you to have a supervisor. You're the manager, the boss. Now you got someone under you that supervised. So now women, we were supposed to submit to him. His plan was, okay, if he said okay go over here and do that just like you're on a job you've got a boss and if you are in leadership you may have a boss then you may be the supervisor the boss has a general mission for the whole department then the supervisor has a mission for the staff and so on and so on but we have to submit to that manager as a supervisor to get the job done the manager will tell us what to do give us instructions and we put the plan together to get the other people to work with us to accomplish that mission that's what submission is it's about accomplishing a mission and what was the mission for man and woman God said be fruitful and multiply so what he was saying was now I am putting the man as the boss the woman as the supervisor and then you're gonna have these little people children that you're gonna supervise because I want you to supervise them to go out and speak the word to talk about me, to tell others about me, to share the vision that I have. And that's for everyone to be under me and my authority, God, because I'm God. Okay, that's part one. Okay, so now let me move on. So we read that in Genesis. Now we're going to go to Ephesians. Because I think it's very pertinent to believe and understand that when God's talking about submission, he's talking to the church body. He's talking to all of us. Ladies, we have to understand that there's a mission God wants us to follow. And the first mission is to follow him. So when sin came in, now we're on our own. And so we're kind of out there. And so God is making up another plan. And the other plan is Yeshua, the Christ, Jesus, the Christ. So now that's the person that now, okay, he's getting ready to be second man. We got first man, Adam, who messed it up and he submitted and he gave his authority over. So now we got to get the authority back because there's a submission. Because if we were all just doing what we want to do, well, pretty much we are doing what we want to do because that's the way, the, that's why the world is looking crazy. But we were really supposed to be under God's mission and we were supposed to do what God said. But because of pride of the enemy, he's 
put that pride in us because now we no longer submit like we're supposed to to God. And then we don't know the order of submission. The order of submission is very important because that's a mission. Sub means under, submarine, under the water, under the marine. So submission, under the mission. We as women got to get under the mission. That's why God says submit. So now that brings me to Ephesians chapter 5, verse, uh, let's start at 21. It says, and further submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. See, if we honor God, we'll submit because we honor God. When you go on your job, you'll submit because you honor God, especially if you are a believer. So this word is talking to you as believers. So as people, we are to go out and we're to submit to whatever authority that is in. That's why when we when we see a police car behind us and we see the lights and we see the sirens and it rides up behind us, we submit to that authority. At least that's the way it used to be. Now we submit to that authority. I mean, now we don't submit to that authority and so many people are getting shot and messed up because we don't submit to the authority that's in place but i understand because the authority can be kind of misguided for real for real but anyway it's supposed to work that when there's an authority we're submitting under that authority amen i hope you're getting it submission is about authority okay so god says submit to one another so then God says in 22, verse 22 of Galatians 5, I mean, excuse me, Ephesians 5, he says, wives for wives, wives, wives. This means submit to your husband. Okay, I did say wives, didn't I? And I did say husband. Women, you don't submit to no one that you call a boyfriend, you call a partner, whatever. Don't submit. You submit to the authority of God. Now, if you are in a relationship with a boyfriend and it looks like marriage, you're learning to submit under God, not that man. Because God didn't tell you to submit to a man. He said, submit to your husband. So as a wife, you submit to your husband. But as a girlfriend, you submit to God. So God is the first priority of submission. So when you're doing what God tells you according to his word, that means live your life right. Clean life. Holy life. That means you're not submitting to a man when he says, oh, baby, you know, we love you. I love you. And, uh, you know, we're about to get married so we can go on and have sex or we can go on and do such and such. And, you know, why don't we live together and blah, 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 blah. No. That's not God's plan. His plan is for two people to come together. And I mean two people, male and female, to come together. And look how it looks. You come together, man, woman, and you come together. And that is the form of prayer. When a man and a woman comes together, they begin to pray. They begin to change things in the lives of themselves as well as others. They change. And then they become fruitful and multiply because if you are childbearing years, you produce children. And when you produce children, your children are to look like God, just like you look like God. And so you're praying and you're sending out godly seed. Now, a man and a man can't do that because they got the same type of body structure. They can't do that. So sorry. That's all I'm saying. Spiritually, Satan is killing the authority of man and woman. He's killing the authority. So he wants man to submit to another man. And he wants a woman to submit to another woman. And he wants us to submit to all the things that we're not supposed to submit to. Because we're only supposed to submit to God. And when God says submit one to another, he said in the reverence of him. Voila. Hope y'all get this. Okay. And wives, wives, submit to your husband. Your husband, the band that closes and keeps you together, the one who will cover you, the one who is supposed to follow God's mission. And his mission is to take care of the woman as she's a gift to him. That woman is the one that's supposed to make sure that um, he's undergirded, that his arms are lifted so that they can go in the path that God has set for them to go in. That's the whole mission. This is about God. This ain't about us. Amen. So then uh, after that, he says, um, for husband is to uh, be the head of his wife, be the head of his wife, like Christ is the head of the church. There's only one head. See, only got one head. Can't have two because you'll look like a creature from, from outer space or you look freakish if you've got two heads. There's one head that tells the body what to do. If I want to move my hand, my mind says, move your hand. There's my hand. Hi. 
If I want to talk, I'm talking. If I want to uh, do my neck, I'm doing my neck. If I need to walk, my head is telling all that to walk. Why? Because we got a mission to go to. If I want to walk to the store, unless my head says, God, get up, go walk. My body won't do nothing. There's a mission. We got to follow the mission. Okay. So now God said for as the man is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of the body, the church, as the church submits to Christ. So you wives should submit to your husband, to your husband in everything. I don't think he mixed any words on that. Hmm. Then it says for husbands, this means love your wife just as Christ loved the church. He gave himself up for her. He gave his life for the church, us, the body, because he was the head. So women. It didn't say men submit to you. It said love you as Christ loved the church. So that means that if he loves you, he didn't have to submit because he loves his body. That's his body as Christ loved the body of Christ as he loved himself, the body. So that man will love you. That's the submission. When you know that that man loves you, he will not lead you anywhere crazy, crooked or stupid. And you won't follow a fool because if he loves his body, he will not harm his body just as Christ wouldn't harm his body. But he gave himself up for it. My motto is, ladies, don't follow a fool. And that get, brings me to some people say, well, if he leads me to the bridge and he says jump and I'm am I supposed to jump? No, because God would never follow a fool. Come on now. Be real. Submission is about doing productive things for the kingdom, not stupid things for the devil submission should be a great word in a marriage because when that woman submits to that man that man loves his body he gonna take care of everything and that woman will never have to worry about a thing amen and there's some women out there who are married who can tell you that now I have a mission my mission is to help broken women to bring them life but guess what when God brings my husband that mission his mission, my mission, and his mission have to come together to be fruitful and multiply. That's the mission. Sub under mission. Sub mission. I am going to come under his mission. But my mission should be the same as his mission. We coming together on this? So women, when you submit, you got to understand you submit to a man that you marry who has the same mission as you. Or your missions come together and they link up. Maybe you're a business owner. He's a business owner. And the businesses that you have, when you come together and you submit to him, and he submits to God, guess what? That thing will prosper and you'll do what God wants you to do. Because obviously, if it's led by God, it's going to bless other people. Okay? I'm just saying. So, we also want to remember that Submission is not a dirty word. Ladies, submission is really not a dirty word when you submit to the right authority. It's about authority. God calls us the weaker vessel in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. He says we are the weaker vessel. Not that we're weak as in our thinking. We're strong women. Understand that. But God knows that there's areas that we need covering in. And sometimes because we are broken, sometimes because we are hurt and we are emotional, we may tend to go in a different direction when God has set an authority to say okay wait a minute let's pray about this because that's what that man should do the first thing is baby let's pray about this and then God will lead and guide him into how to manage that now understand women you are wisdom because God calls you wisdom in the Bible wisdom as I read it and I think it's in the vine it's called Sophia a woman okay but God will give you women wisdom You'll know what you need to submit to. Sometimes that man may be off a little bit. That husband may be off a little bit. That's when it's your responsibility to go get in your prayer closet and begin to pray for that man that God will lead him. And then he'll come back and say, well, you know what, baby? I don't think that's a better idea. I think I need to, well, you know, you, you made a suggestion. I think we need to go with that. So understand submission. Obey. God said in the word, obey. 
I remember Sarah. She was in her own mission when she told Abraham to go in there and sleep with Hagar. And we see what that got us into. Same thing with Eve. Then she turned around in Hebrews and said, as she called him Lord, as she obeyed, because she realized that he had heard from God. She realized that he was walking with God. She realized that his communication was with God was in the right authority. And she looked at that man and said, you're in authority. I'm going to follow what you say. Because obviously God got you. See, God will take care of you women. Don't underestimate what God will do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. You may not understand submission, but you are to submit to the man God gives you. That's why you need to be praying now and you need to be listening now so you can learn how to submit to God. Submit to authority so that when that man comes, you'll know how to submit to him. And it ain't, especially a single woman who've been single for a long time. We'd be like, I ain't going to do it that way. I've been doing it this way. Hey, nah. When you go on your job. And your boss tells you something to do. I just did this this week. So I'm telling you from my experience. I learned something at another job that seemed to work. But then I came into a new atmosphere and they was doing it the old way. And my thing was, well, hey, I did this over here. And so why don't we do But this is a new place. I'm under a new authority. So let me submit to the new authority. Because I'm no longer with the old authority. So even on your job, you learn to submit to the boss, the manager, the supervisor. And if you're in leadership and you have to have a mission for that position, job, or maybe you're on your own business, you want your employees to submit to the mission God has given you. The business may be bakery. And if it's a bakery, you don't want people going out here trying to make deli sandwiches when you got a bakery. You, they are to submit to the mission that you have. That means make some good cookies, make some good cakes, make some good pastries so we can get paid. Submission. Submission in life is all about God, the authority of God. But women, you got to learn to submit along the way so that when that man comes, you'll know how to submit. Okay, I'm outside with the bugs and the birds and the bees and all that stuff. So anyway, I have went a little bit longer than I was supposed to. But I wanted you to get that submission. There's so much teaching on submission. Y'all need to call me, Agape Servant. I'm on Facebook. Inbox me so we can go further. I'm actually writing a book. Well, a manual to help. That I'm going to be teaching and training about women and identity and submission and all that good stuff. The plan of God. Because as women, we have to be whole and healthy. And sometimes authority has messed us up. We've been in bad marriages because we didn't submit to God's authority on who we were supposed to marry because we were too busy looking with our eyes on what we thought. Submit to God. That's the first thing. That's the order. Amen. Okay, this is Agape Servant Chronicles of Single Living. Y'all inbox me. Give me some comments. Let me know. Come on. I'm here to help. So look for my manual. It's called Understanding the Purpose in Yourself. Agape Servant. Chronicles of Single Living. Facebook page. YouTube. I'm just saying. Y'all be blessed now. Love y'all.